everyone, welcome back to Shop Life. Back at it again with another DIY. This DIY is gonna be for the oil level sensor on your E46. So the oil level sensor on the E46 is located on the bottom of the oil pan. Luckily, you can remove the oil level sensor without taking off the oil pan or anything like that. Uh, one of the, this is one of the most common uh, sensor errors that you'll have on your car. The easiest way to tell if your oil level sensor is bad is by, if you're getting an oil level warning light, when your oil level is fine. Usually you'll get this when you turn the car on within the first 10 seconds or so, you'll see that yellow oil light come up on top and it'll probably just go away within five, 10 seconds. And that usually indicates that the sensor itself is bad. And what you should do is if that light does come on, still check your level, uh, make sure if it is level and that light is still coming on, that pretty much tells you right away that that sensor is bad. Another issue with the sensor could possibly be just that O-ring that's on the sensor starting to leak which is the case with our E46 wagon right behind me. So let me show you how the leak will look like and where the location is. Uh, you won't really be able to see it without removing all the trays and stuff, but let me go ahead and show you. All right, so here is some of the oil leaks that you can tell. Uh, this car has no other oil leaks. We did a 330 swap in here and almost every gasket has been replaced, uh, except for the oil level sensor. So the O-ring on there has started to leak. The sensor itself I don't think is bad. Uh, we don't get any warning lights or anything like that. But that O-ring itself is bad. You can actually buy the O-ring separately. So if you only have a leak, you can just replace the O-ring. Uh, I'm not really sure of the history of this sensor. So we're just replacing the entire sensor since I'm gonna be pulling it off anyways and I don't wanna have to you know, do it all over again in the future. So we will have to remove this whole tray. But before you do this, you do have to drain all of your oil because that sensor is at the lowest part of the pan. So we're gonna start out by loosening the oil filter housing so that way most of that oil starts draining back into the pan before we remove the drain plug. So whenever you're gonna do oil change, the first step is always to open up the dipstick tube. So just open up a little bit. And then you also want to loosen the oil filter housing. You don't wanna remove it all the way. You're just gonna remove the cap uh, until that O-ring starts to show. And what that will do is it'll allow all of the oil that's in the housing itself to go back into the pan. So in order to do this, you really want a 36 millimeter socket. Um, if you don't have that, obviously you can figure something else out. You, might, you could use an open-ended wrench or any other thing that you come up with. But be careful, these are plastic, they do tend to crack. You can actually buy an aluminum one online through ECS Tuning or any other vendor. You can see the O-ring starting to show. So it's gonna go a little bit more. And the main reason you wanna do this slowly is because it is gonna be full. If you start opening it really quick, some of that oil will start to spill out. You can see how some of the oil is starting to come off from the O-ring. And there we have it. All right, so we're just gonna put the cap back on so that no dust gets in. Obviously, you don't have to remove it all the way like I did, but we just went ahead and pulled it out since the, all the oil started draining back. All right, now we can lift the car back up and remove the rest of the oil by opening up the drain bolt. The oil drain bolt on the E46 is located right here. If you do have uh, the cover still here, which will be an amazing thing. Just pull the cover off, it's gonna be held in with like a Phillips screw. Once that's done, now we can remove the 17 millimeter bolt. While the oil is draining, we can start loosening the bolts for the reinforcement tray. They're gonna be 16 millimeter bolts. There should be a total of eight, and you'll see the hole for each one. If you have a older E46, you might have the triangle brace, which is not like this metal tray, but it's like a metal bar in a triangle fashion. And that one should only have about four bolts. So go ahead and remove those if you have that. And those will also be 16 millimeter. All right, so once the oil has been drained, 
Make sure you replace the washer on your drain bolt and go ahead and tighten up the drain bolt. And the drain bolts are hollow, so when you are tightening the bolt, make sure you don't over tighten it because uh, otherwise it will break off and the threads will remain inside and you have to use some kind of extractor to pull all the threads out. All right, so now you can see the oil level sensor right here and you can see how the oil is dripping all around it and that is mainly because of that seal. So the oil level sensor is only held in with three 10 millimeter nuts and you also have the connector. The connector just has two tabs on both sides. Squeeze those and you should be able to pull it right off. If you do have oil on the connector, you wanna use some kind of electrical sensor cleaner uh, so you can use some kind of contact cleaner and worst case scenario, if you don't really have anything, or just wipe it clean to the best of your ability. All right, put that on the side and get your drain pan again because it should it is probably still gonna leak out some more. Now you just have to wiggle it and you'll start feeling it let loose. And just let it out all the way. If you are replacing the seal only, you can see the orange seal that's inside of here. So you just have to pull that old seal out, put the new one on. You can buy just the seal only, but I highly recommend if you're going through all this, might as well go ahead and replace the sensor. Uh, and this actually seems like it's been replaced before. And it actually seems like a no name brand, which is probably why that seal started leaking. So I would recommend using the OEM, which is made by Hella. Uh, and I think they're about 60 to 70 bucks, which is kind of expensive for the sensor, but you don't want to leak in the future and you kind of do want it to work. So that way, if you are low on oil, it lets you know. And either way, I still recommend checking your oil level every time you fill up gas, just so you can stay on top of it. All right, so we're gonna just clean this whole area up. And then once it's cleaned up, then we can go ahead and put the new one on. So here's the new one. You can write down the part number if you want. All right, let's install it. And if you do get a genuine or OEM manufacturer, you'll see it has all the stamps and everything on it. You can lubricate the O-ring with a little bit of oil. Now just line everything up and make sure you get it so that the connector's on the right side. Hook up the connector. All right, make sure everything's nice and tight. Make sure the connector is hooked up. And now we can put the tray back on. I'm gonna leave my tray off right now since I'm gonna be doing a few other things on the car. But to put the tray back on, just hold it up, uh, hand tighten all of the bolts first, and then tighten all of them down once all the bolts are in. That way you don't cross thread anything. It does help to have a second person or some kind of jack or something supporting it. But besides that, now we can let the car down, put the new filter, and put the oil in. All right, so now we're gonna replace the oil filter. As you saw, we already had the cap loosened up or you might have also removed it. So go ahead and remove it all of the way. And then we're gonna remove this O-ring. If your filter's still there, pull it off. It comes right off of this. Sometimes the filter will be stuck to the housing. So just pull it off like that. Let's take this to the table. So as far as the oil filters go, I highly recommend using Hengst or a Manhommel. I'm pretty sure I'm not saying either one of those right. These you probably won't find at your local auto parts store, but the Manhommel you can, uh, and then the number should be a 9254. So just make sure you buy that. You can also buy them online just to be ahead of everything. And then here's a washer that you would wanna put on your drain bolt, and this is the O-ring that we're putting. I use a different washer, so I don't need that. Get the new O-ring, slide it on, and you want to use oil to lubricate the O-ring. Uh, ideally, you want to use new oil. You can also use some kind of silicon spray or anything like that, just so that way it doesn't get damaged when you're installing it. So now the filter, we're going to put that in the housing first. Make sure there's no dirt and debris in the housing itself, and then you can slide the filter on first. You'll feel it click in, just like that. Now we're going to slide this over it. 
You want to hand tighten it first, make sure it's not cross threaded. Tighten it down with your 36 millimeter socket. Now we're going to fill up the oil. So as far as oil goes on the E46 or any M54, and mostly all Beamers now, BMW recommends using their 5W30, which is available through the dealership. Now it's called the Twin Power, uh, but you can also use any other LL01 approved oil. Uh, some BMWs require LL04. Just check your owner's manual depending on what it is. As far as the LL01, so mostly E46 if you're watching this, you want to use a 0W40 European formula or a 5W40. Uh, make sure it's fully synthetic. I like to use the 0W40, it's worked well for me. And typically for oil change intervals go, depending on your driving, it can be 5,000 miles or it could be up to 8,000 miles. I never run it over 8,000 miles and I don't recommend anybody else do it either, even if it's full highway driving. So if you're doing a lot of city driving, you might want to do around five to 6,000 mile oil change interval. Uh, and if you're doing a lot of highway, try to go around 7,500. Also, it depends on how much oil, your oil you are losing as well. And just you know, stay on top of everything. Uh, usually about six to nine months is the longest you want to go without changing the oil. But anyways, as far as the capacity goes, it's going to take about 6.8 quarts. Uh, if you have an XI, obviously it's going to be a little bit more. So depending on your model, just check your owner's manual. It has all that stuff in there or just Google it. All right, now let's just check the oil level. All right, so we're going to wipe the dipstick clean first. And there's the level. It is a little bit overfilled, but there, the oil is still going to recirculate. It's going to go into the oil filter housing as well. And you ideally want to check your oil level. Once the car's fully warmed up, you turn it off, let it sit for about five minutes, and then you check the level. That way you get an accurate reading. But anyways, that's it for this video. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you need to get in touch with me, feel free to message me on Instagram at shoplifetv. And also, if you ever need any parts for your E46 for maintenance, contact me on Instagram and I can let you know how much I can get them for. And if you're local, it works out easy for you. Anyways, that's it for this video. Make sure you go check out all my other videos. Make sure you go check out the vlog channel at Shop Life Vlogs. And also check out the camera person, which is my girlfriend, BMW Selena's channel for her LS3 swap, which is almost complete. We even have some first drive videos up on her channel now. So make sure you go check that out.